A pair of siblings who killed a 15-year-old learned their fate. A judge sentenced 17-year-old Kyle Hooper and his sister Amber Wright to life in prison. The two were found guilty of beating, shooting, and burning the body of 15-year-old Seth Jackson. And you helped drag him back in the house after Seth tried to escape. <sighs> yes, ma'am. This case is the single most cold, calculated, premeditated case of murder that I have ever seen. In 2011, Kyle Hooper was living as a roommate with Charlie Ely and the boyfriend of Hooper's half-sister, Amber Wright. The 16-year-old was under a lot of stress. He struggled to make rent, even though he was taking as many shifts as possible at McDonald's. He was also caught up in the drama between Wright and her ex-boyfriend, Seth Jackson. The two had parted on bad terms and were spreading lies and insults about one another. Hooper, as well as Wright's current boyfriend, Michael Bargo, fell for the lies told by Wright, and their animosity toward Jackson grew. It did not help matters when Hooper caught Jackson in bed with his girlfriend, a betrayal that Bargo used to get Hooper to agree with his plan. He wanted to murder Seth Bargo. Bargo, Hooper, and Wright plotted with their two friends, Charlie Ely and Justin Roach Soto, to lure Jackson to Ely's home, where Bargo planned to shoot him. Wright and Ely convinced Jackson that Wright wanted to repair their relationship, and he agreed to come over to talk, unaware that Hooper and Soto would be lying in wait with sticks. Once Jackson was in the house, he was attacked by Hooper and Soto while the girls ran to another room. Bargo shot Jackson repeatedly with a 22 revolver, eventually killing him. After dismembering and setting fire to the body, Bargo placed the remains in paint buckets, which he then hid in a nearby quarry. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a seat right there. All right, I got a few questions. What we're finding really hard to believe is, first of all, where did the bleach come from? Because we all know there was no bleach in that house. Well, that's what I thought it was. The for real, no lies, no nothing. That's what I thought it was. Oh, it was bleach. Everybody said it smelled like bleach. No, no, no. That's right. Literally, the bleach. I thought it was already at the house. So, did you go anywhere and get bleach? No, no, ma'am. I haven't had no money until yesterday. That's when I got my picture. Okay. Did you know if Michael went anywhere and got bleach? He hasn't left the house as far as I knew. Hooper would not know what cleaning products are typically kept at Charlie Ely's house. After Jackson's death, events became chaotic and the group did not stay in each other's sight at all times. It is possible that Hooper missed Bargo leaving to buy the bleach. They made me spill everything. I had to. I had no choice. I didn't clean up anything, and he keeps asking me, did you clean up anything? I was like, no, I've been in my room. That's what I told him. <laughs> That's what, and I'm like, me and Amber have been in the room. We didn't see blood. We didn't see anything. No, I can because she knows I cleaned it. Well, I told her that, too. I, I wasn't going to do that. Did you tell her I cleaned the floor? Hmm? Well, I told her. I told her I only cleaned the door. Hmm? I told her, well, I told her every single detail that I know, and I don't know about the bleach situation. They kept on asking me. They kept me asking me where the bleach came from. I was like, I don't know. She's like, you're lying to me. I was like, I really don't know where the bleach came from. I, I told her the same exact thing. I didn't know. When I got to that house, when I saw her living there, that bleach was there. As far as I knew. She was like, does your mom know about Well, I can say it was burnt. Well, it's burnt. Um, another thing that we're kind of concerned about, did he leave the house that night at all? Uh... I'm not sure. I mean, I did fall asleep I mean, between any of the times, but I have woke up. But he was after there. he shot him, what did he do exactly? Right after he shot him, what did he do? He start, He grabbed the body and he hurried up and dragged it into the bathroom. Okay. So you saw him dragging it into the bathroom? Yes, ma'am. see him put it in the tub? No, uh, I didn't really see him put it in the tub because I was out. But I was, but I did come back in and I was seeing him put it into the Excuse me. Detective Stroop, I need you to talk for a second. Excuse me. Okay. 
so oh, sorry about that. Um, I I, I want to be perfectly honest with you. Okay, this is how this is how I work. I'm giving you an opportunity right now to lie to me. Okay, if you take that opportunity, okay, you're a fool. The detective isn't bothering with a soft approach. Hooper has already made it clear that he is the weak link in the group, and she knows that if she keeps applying pressure, he will spill everything. Everything that comes out of your little mouth right now better be 110% the truth, okay? What was one of the things I first told you when I met you today? What did I tell you I would never do? Uh, you wouldn't lie to me. Exactly. That's respect for you. And I expect that same respect back. Yes, ma'am. Okay? So, I think that you understand when your mom was sitting in there, I could tell you were lying to me. Yes, ma'am. Okay? We agree on that? Yes, ma'am. Mom, get out of the room, and I said, I want the truth. Now, I'm going to give you one more shot right here, right now, to correct any little discrepancy. Okay? You have to remember one thing. There's more than one person being interviewed here, okay? Yes, ma'am. So you need to make sure that Kyle gets Kyle's poop in a group, okay? And protects yes, Kyle with the truth. Yes, ma'am. All right, now let's start back at the beginning of this. And this is your one and only last chance to correct any discrepancies you may have of the story that you told me. Okay? Want to start fresh? No. Man, I'm scared. Kyle, I'm sure you are. Okay? I, I, I don't want to guilt. I don't want to go through none of this. I didn't mean for none of this to happen. <laughs> okay, but you know what, Kyle? Right now is the time to man up. Right now is where the rubber meets the road. Okay? So, I'm not going to waste my time with you if you're not going to be honest with me, okay? I'm going to throw you away like a piece of garbage. I know. Now, are you a piece of garbage? <laughs> I hope not. You hope not? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's, that's how I feel. let's do this. Look at me, because I want you to look at me when I'm talking to you. Let's do this. Let's put it out on the table, okay? And let's take it piece by piece and see what we can do with it, okay? I just don't want to get my phone in. That's what I don't want. <laughs> I don't think anybody in the world, Kyle, wants to be locked up. But we've got to, you're not telling the truth. You know it. I know it. I can do nothing for you. I can't, I can't even, I can do nothing. I can't talk to you if you're not going to tell me the truth. So let's start, let's start at the beginning, okay? Just, just you and I here, just start at the beginning. What, tell me what really happened. All right, I get off work on uh, Sunday night. Okay. All right. My uh, stepdad, James, my mom's ex. Uh -huh. That's your mom, Tracy Wright's ex, yeah. James Wright. Yeah. He dropped you. Um, he dropped me off. He dropped, he dropped yeah, you off. He dropped me off at Charlie's. Okay. And uh, I, me and him were talking because I just got done yelling at my mom. It was all I had to For what? Um, because um, I sold my laptop and, um, and I had paid Charlie. Um, had, you know, I told my laptop she was mad about it. You Maybe sold your laptop to what, pay Charlie like rent or whatever? Yeah, yeah. And my mom was mad about it. And okay. I was upset. And, um, and, uh, I just got done yelling at her and everything. And I told her, you know, uh, I'm losing my family and everything. And You uh, told who you're losing? My mom. Okay. Uh, I'm losing my family. I'm losing everything. And, uh, why do you, what do you, you why? gotta explain that to me, why do you, why do you mean you're losing your family? Why? Because, uh, I mean, it's like, every time I turn around, uh, something's going on, something's happening, you know? Like, what kind of stuff? Tell me. Like, I'm always out here with my dad, my dad and I are, um, 
mean, we weren't on talking terms until yesterday, really. Okay. And it was just, it's just in the last couple of weeks, I've had so much things on my mind. And, uh, I don't know. Okay, so and your then, dad picks you up at uh, work? Yeah, James picks me up. Now, James is not your biological no, father, though. No. Okay. Is that the one you said that you were just now on speaking terms with? Is James? No, that's okay. my actual dad. Okay, so your biological the father you're just with now. Um, well, he drops me off. All right. Well, we got this kid that comes over. He play, His name is Brandon. He plays a guitar. Brandon? Yeah, his name is Brandon. He plays a guitar. He's got long hair. He's in a band and stuff like that. That comes over to Charlie's house? Yeah. You know, he plays guitar. And, well, he was out there playing the guitar and stuff like that on the front yard and everything. And then... Um, Mike, he was, um, he was like getting all into it. He went in the house. I guess he was smoking some pills or whatever. And, um, he was. What kind of pills? Um, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, Margo was known for selling drugs. He, along with his girlfriend Amber Wright, also used them. It is believed that they contributed to the frenzied, violent manner in which he murdered Jackson. I recently released another shocking case on my Patreon. This video shows the interview of a man who, after being involved in the murder of a man and his wife, later ended up shooting a 12-year-old boy in the head. You can watch it right now at patreon.com slash stranger stories plus. There are white pills. Where'd he get them? Um, doesn't tell me he gets any of this stuff. I don't know. He don't tell me nothing about stuff like that, honestly. Okay. Um, so he's snorting some pills and yeah, so on. And, and he, you know, he's getting all hired, wired up, hyped up, and everything. And, um, somebody brought up the name Seth, and um, he, uh, he's like, "Man, I want to go to killing spree tonight." He's like, "I, I just want to." And uh, he's like, "You guys down?" And I told him, "No." I told him, "I don't." When he said, "You guys down?" Who's he talking to? Like, like you and um, him. Me, Amber. Charlie um, Roach. Okay. Who's Roach now? Uh, oh, the guy Justin Soto. Oh, okay, so okay. So Soto was there. Sweetest man. Okay. Okay. And uh, we were all talking. Um, we were all talking about it. I told him I didn't want to do it or whatever. And he was like, he was like, come on. Come was he talking about man. killing? Was he talking about killing Seth? Uh, pretty much because he was like, man, I because. I, He's like, um, all you gotta do is find him, get him way down here, and everything like that. And he didn't want Amber to, he didn't want Amber to call him off on the phone or text him. And she didn't, he didn't want nothing to have her or Charlie to have nothing to do with it. Well, Amber decided and she agreed to it. And um, I don't know, I get, I, I went along with it, but I didn't think he was gonna, I didn't think he was gonna do. So what did Mike tell Amber to do? Um, that I really, to be honest with you, I don't know. I was on the side of the house, um, but I come back and she's talking about meeting him up over at Beverly Hills Estates, whatever, and I'm walking him back down to the house. Margo, Wright, and Ely agreed that Wright and Ely would lure Jackson to the house by pretending that Wright wanted to reconcile and go back to being in a romantic relationship with Jackson. Take a deep breath, you're doing really well. It's about time. So I mean. It's okay. So let me just try to recap where we're at so far. You've got Brandon. What's Brandon's last name? I don't know. I, I hardly know the kid. Yeah. Where does he live? I don't know. I know he drives around the creek. He, but he was gone. He left. He, he was. He okay, so, but when you come home from work, Brandon's playing guitar in the front yard. He showed up and, yeah, he was wanting to play guitar. And okay. And, uh, and so he was playing guitar. Okay, okay, let me restart this. Okay, I come up. James was there and everything like that. And, um, you know, we would listen to him play guitar or whatever. James, right. Yeah, James was still there. It was Okay, James, Brandon, um, my sister, Charlie, Mike, and I, and Justin. Okay. okay. We were all there. Well, uh... He kept on, Mike, you know, like I said, he was doing the pills with whatever he went in the house and he'd come back. And, uh, Anybody else doing pills with him? Um, Honestly. Uh, no, I don't really, I mean, I have a couple times, but I really don't. Um, and he come back outside and everybody was still out there. And then Justin, uh, Brandon's like, man, I'm going to go. Right, I got to get, I got to go home. It's time for my mom. She wants me. So he left. 
Okay. And then um, Mike was all hyped up and everything, man. He was like, listen, um, I want to do this. Uh, I want to do what? He, he's like, I want to go on a killing spree tonight, man. And I was like, yeah, I really don't want nothing to do with it. And uh, he turned to everybody. He's like, man, I want to, I want to. And I'm like... What did he explain as a killing spray? Like, like he wanted to... He wanted, like I said, he wanted eight bodies by the end of the week. And, um, and, uh, I mean, I really, I really hated Seth. And, um, there was time, because my ex-girlfriend, I found him in the bed with my ex-girlfriend. And I really didn't like that. And I loved her. And, um, but I really didn't want to go out and kill the kid. It wasn't my intention. Um, and he come, um, all right. Mm -hmm. Well, Mike was talking about it. He's like, listen. He's like, I'll do it. And, and, and believe it or not, Amber wanted it done. Amber don't want nothing to do with him. Amber wanted him dead and gone. He deserved it. Another reason for Hooper's hatred of Jackson is that Wright has spread the false rumor that Jackson harmed her. She and Jackson were in the middle of a bitter feud, and she hoped to turn as many people against him as possible. Before we move forward, I want to extend my thanks for watching. This video today has no sponsor, so if you're enjoying it, subscribing helps the channel grow. You can also check out my second channel, Stranger Crimes, after this video. You guys plan to murder an innocent kid? An innocent kid? No, he's not innocent. No, that kid's been talking about shooting us. And he's been Nobody told her that, did we? Nobody told her. I'll tell her what you're doing, Mike. Right Mom's gonna hate us. Yeah, imagine how my family's gonna be on it. Or he does hate us. She's not gonna hate us, she's just sad that... I oh. need my mom and mom here, I'm scared, I miss Joey. Listen, I'm not gonna be able to say Joey, he's gonna leave me. No, listen, you put this detective in here and we're all three gonna talk to him. You understand me? We're all three gonna sit here and tell them <coughs> the same thing, cause it's all, cause it's all out in the open now. Yeah. And we did not kill an innocent kid because this kid is not innocent. So beyond nothing. And I told her <laughs> she threatened. Like, I told her she he threatened to burn my house, to kill my family. I told him that. What she said? Because she never told me. That's why she didn't tell me it was an innocent kid. That's why. So. When did she tell you this? When she put me in the room next door. And right so you guys have been together the whole time. Out. Right before I walked back. I in. haven't seen nobody. I haven't seen nobody since I the first time I've seen anybody. You really did. So there was the talk about you wanted him dead, and Mike agreed to do it for you. This was a while back. But this was in the same day, and I wanted him dead, but I didn't want to do it, and I didn't want nothing to happen over at Charlie's house. I said, you can do it on your own, basically. How long ago did that conversation take place before Sunday? Um, probably about after that fight over in my front yard, um, in the front of my yard, a um, couple days after that. Um, so you're talking about Friday? No, this was like two, oh, like a month or so okay. before this. Um, so a month or so before this, you and Amber and Mike are talking about killing Seth. Um, no, okay. no. I wanted him dead, but I didn't want to do it, and I didn't want nothing to be a part of it. I didn't want it, nothing. But and Mike said he would do but it. But Mike said he would do it. So you and talked he, to and Mike he about kept on it. saying, he kept on saying, "Man, I'll take the blame for it. I'll take the blame for everything. I'll do it. I'll do everything." I'll take the blame if, if the cops ask you if anything. I'll take the blame. I have nothing to lose. And I was like, well, I still don't want another part of it. And now we're going back on the day that I got off work. Back on Sunday. You know, we're going back on that day now. Okay. And uh, he's like, all right. I told him, all right. It, it's whatever, man. I, 
I, I, I mean, he says, I feel like going on a killing spree. And, uh, and, and I told him, it's whatever. And Amber agreed to it. Everybody was agreed to it. So did Soto agree? Huh? Soto? Roach? Yeah, everybody agreed. He like agreed? I said, everybody agreed. Amber, Amber agreed? Mm-hmm. And Jay, Charlie agreed? Mm-hmm. Mike and, said he would do it, and you agreed. So there's five people. That's mine. Okay. Oh, my God, It's okay. You're doing fine, though. You're doing okay. You know. So what did you guys agree to do? What was okay, the plan? Well, I walked onto the side of the house. Amber wanted to talk to, uh, I mean, Mike wanted to talk to Amber or whatever. And, Mike, and then all of a sudden, Amber got on the phone with Seth. She's, he's like, it's better to call than text because they can trace back text. And uh, I was like, and I guess Amber agreed to it or whatever. Who's found? Who did, whose phone did Amber use to call? I think she used her phone. Okay. So she called Seth. Yes, ma'am. Uh-huh. And she walked up there to go to the state. Well, this was later on, a few hours later. Everything was agreed, everything, everything. So wait a second now. Hold on, hold on, because you got to take me through it slow, because okay. I have to okay. be able to explain okay. it to you. Um, so you guys are all there at the house. You decide that tonight's the night Seth dies. Basically. Basically? Yes. Okay. And the deal was that Mike would be the one that kills him? Or yes. were you supposed to kill him and Mike was going to take the blame? Mike. Mike okay. was supposed to do everything. Mike's supposed to do everything. And Amber's just supposed to lure him to the house. Basically. Okay. What you say basically? What was Amber's role? What was she uh, supposed to do? Just to get him to the house. Okay. That was it. Just to get him to the house. So Amber calls him. And, yeah. Okay. Amber calls. Okay. And then. Then what happened? Um, all of a sudden, uh, Seth goes, okay, I'm, I'm going to leave Brittany. I don't know. I don't even know who Brittany is, but okay. she, he's like, I'm going to leave Brittany, and I'm walking up by myself. I'm, half, uh, I'm, I'm almost halfway from Bobby Hills Estates. Well, Charlie and Amber, they walk up there to go meet him. Okay. And uh, Mike's sitting here talking to me about it. He's like, what's wrong, man? I was like, man, I don't want to do this. I'm nervous, man. I, I don't want nothing to do with this. And he's like, if you're in, he don't deserve to be here. He hit your sister. Think about everything he's done. Threatened to burn your house. Everything. Um, and just and it just kind of kept on getting to me, getting to me. And I kept on thinking about everything. I kept on getting angry and angry. And then it was supposed to be planned that when he come in the house, Roach was supposed to be sitting on the couch. He was supposed to sit next to him. And Roach had a stick. I had a stick, um, and Mike was supposed to shoot him. Well, when Seth sat down, Mike was, uh, the, the key word or whatever was supposed to be, Roach was supposed to say, fuck it, and hit him with the stick. And I was supposed, we were supposed to come out the room, and um, I was going to hit him. I was going to hit him, and we, he wanted him, see, he wanted him knocked out. Mike wanted him knocked out, but it didn't work that way. Um, nothing went as planned, nothing, nothing. Um, Seth come in, me and Mike were in the room. Um, you guys were, you and Mike were in Mike's room? Yeah, we were in his room. Okay. And supposedly Amber and Charlie told, um, Seth be, uh, that nobody was at the house. And when they found Roach, um, in the, in the living room on the couch, he kind of, I guess, they told me Seth kind of backed up and was like, whoa, 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 and then... Jackson was suspicious about the situation from the beginning, and one of the friends he had been with when he received the text from Wright warned him that it was a bad idea to meet with her. I guess they were making, uh, Charlie was making some lie, and I thought you were supposed to text before you come here or something like that. And uh, I guess um, Amber and uh, Roach was messing around with ice, ice cubes or something like that in the in the kitchen and Mike's like man I can't do this it's got to be done now he's like wait we can't. he's not he's sitting in the love seat he, he's like it's got to be done now what love seat the the no, it's not a, like a love seat it's, it's like, like the, the chair and the a half chair like, like that was okay. in the other room okay um, so Seth's so sitting in that chair who's in the living room when he's sitting um there? nobody was in the living room I, well, it was Roach. Roach Amber and Charlie they were I, I, they were in the kitchen okay and I and then because this ain't like this house ain't like the East Wing and West Wing. No, they you can it's pretty just much one, see it. Yeah, it's, okay. it's like a, it's just a double it's a wide trailer. Room. It's just a double wide trailer. Okay. And um, 
Mike's like, man, you know what? It's not going. It's got to be done. Are you ready? I said, man, I, I don't know. Give me a second to think about this. He said, dude, think about it, man. He puts his hand on my shoulder. He's like, think about it. Do it. Look at everything he's done to you. He said, he told you he was going to fuck your girl, and he was doing it. And it just kept on getting to me and getting to me. And, and, I, and I was like, whatever. And he, Mike opened the door. I come out. I hit him over the stick, the head. Where was Seth when you hit him? He was in the chair. Okay. And I hit him over the head with the stick, and it broke three times on him. What was the stick? It it was like I said, frame of a door. It basically, what it looked like. It you know nothing to hurt him. And um, how are you gonna knock him out? Huh? Oh, Roach was supposed to hit him with that with a bigger stick. So Ro Soto had a bigger stick. Yeah. When you say Roach, you're talking about Justin. Yeah, Justin. Soto, I, I keep, that's what okay. I really know him by. Roach. Okay. Um, and he was. That's what really was supposed to do it. And Mike was like, I want him in the bathroom, and I want him knocked out, and I want him to wake up and know that I'm gonna kill him. That's what it was. But it didn't happen like that. I hit him, and he stood up. And when I broke it over his head three times, he stood up, and then Roach come in. Um, and then he hit him with the sti his stick, and he was, and then he was trying to go through the kitchen, and uh, Mike shot him in the back twice with the gun. Okay. Um, and then he was still trying to go out. The, he was still trying to go out the front door, and Mike just kept on shooting him. I kept on telling Mike, I was like, "Stop it! Stop it! Let him go! Let him go!" Mike, and he just kept on shooting him. And he goes out. He goes out the. He goes out the house, and Roach grabs him like this. And Seth on the ground and has him choked, and uh, I don't know what he did to his knee, but he kind of messed up his knee and he rolled. Roach rolled over. Who messed up his knee? Roach. Okay. Which, Soto, and he rolled over, and Mike come up and shot him in the head, and that's when it was over. The shot to the face is what ultimately killed Jackson. Although Bargo continued to shoot and beat the body. So he was shot outside the house. All right, in the house and outside. Okay. And oh my God, man. And um, I come back into the, and then uh, I was like, Mike's like, man, grab him, grab him. You gotta grab him, Kyle. We can't have nobody. We gotta grab him. And I, and I was scared. I was freaking out. And I'm like, I, okay, okay, okay. And I grabbed him. And I pulled him up the stairs. And, and grabbed who? Seth. I started pulling him up the stairs. Was Seth still alive? Partially, yeah. He okay, was so he was still breathing at that time. He, he was partially still alive. Partially, okay. but he he was about, he was um, he was gonna die. Okay, already. He, where did um, where did Michael shoot him in the head? Um, I think I think in the back of the head. Um, I think he shot him right in the back. Of the Who head. was that? Was Soto was right the one closest? Uh, pretty much, yeah. And he shot him in the back of the head. Okay. And um, so you drag him back in the house. Uh, and then Mike helped me, and then um, they put him in the bath. And then um, who Roach put him come in? The in Roach come in, and he helped put him in the bathtub. Okay. And um, Mike put him in the bathtub, and I and I kept on running out the house, man. I didn't know what I was thinking. I, While Hooper was panicking, Bargo was beating Jackson's body and screaming insults. And I didn't know anything. I was freaking out. I was scared, man. Mm -hmm. and, Where are the girls at? And, While this is all they, they ran it. They were in the. They went into the room. Okay. Right after, I right after I hit him with the stick, they ran into the room, okay. and um, so they didn't see him get shot. No, they didn't. They, no, um, and um, that happened. Um, and then I come in, and then Mike's wanting to break it. I come in, and Mike's trying to break his kneecaps to, you know, to put is him he in dead the at this time. point, or is he yeah, still? he's completely dead. How do you um, know that? Why? Because Mike just Mike kept on shooting him in the bathtub too. I heard it outside. The girls because the girls ran out the back door and went out front. Shooting and him in the bathtub. Yeah, he, he. That's why I said he he went because he had okay. It's a revolver, twenty two right. revolver, mm -hmm. and he had two cylinders. And he had one for his magnums and one for his shorts, or whatever. And he put both of the cylinders in there. He put one and he laid. And that's what he shot him with the first time. And then when he was in the bathtub. He just, Mike kept on getting all psycho and pissed and kept on punching him and, and shooting him. And I had to grab him 
I disciplined him back and I told him to stop. I said, listen, you need to stop right now. And um, he's like, you're right. And I let him go. I so was, are there holes in the bathtub? He sh he completely shot set. I mean, I don't I didn't see no holes or nothing. The they're just they were shot set. Twenty two. Twenty two. Okay. Um, Twenty two revolver. It's all black. Where is it at right now? Um, it's under the house in the in the in the air duct. Um, he said like a um, few feet um, to the left when you come out the bathroom. It's a few feet to the left. Something like that. And, um, so do I have to pick up the floor to get to it or what? No, there's an air duct. You so just pick up the vent and feel it? Pick up the vent, you drag the air duct, the, 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 the tube, you pull it back, and there's a slit where he was originally supposed to roll into it. There was nothing really supposed to be hidden there. He was the only one that's supposed to be hidden there if cops come up for um, him being... Uh, uh, for his warrant, his right. warrant out for his arrest or something. That that's what that was originally was for. Okay. Um, well, he threw the gun in there and everything. Um, that's where the gun's at right now. That, that's where the gun. Where is are the sticks to be at right now. that you guys? Uh, um, everything got burned. Everything. Um, the bleach and like I said, the bleach was at the house that I knew of, and everybody kept on talking about bleach, um, cleaning the floors and everything. So. We, we all just started freaking out. And Who all cleaned the floors? Um, me, Amber, Roach tried to, but he was sitting on the couch with his knee, putting ice on it and stuff like that, you know. Uh -huh. um, I tried helping him pop it or whatever, and uh, but it was me, um, Parsley, Roach, um, Amber, uh, I don't know what, I don't know what Charlie was doing. I think she was still in the room. Um, and then I then tried helping to clean the bathtub or whatever, and then they kept then they put the body into the uh, and then I then that's when I come I walked out and then I was coming back in and that's when Mike had his kneecap had his leg pulled out like this with like with some in his hand some hard trying to break his kneecap. What were they having his hand? Uh, I I don't uh, it, it looked like it was wooden kind of uh, I really don't know what it was kind of rounded. Um, but he was trying to break his kneecap with it, and uh, eventually he did, and put it the he put his legs behind his back, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then he hog tied him, and then he put him in the bag. In what bag? Uh, the, the like I said that sleeping um, bag. The sleeping bag. Okay, then what did he do? Okay, and then um, Where then is he Seth started. At and then, and Seth, he's in the bag. Where is the bag at? Everything got burned. Everything got threw into the, that court, that rock court. Okay. No, I don't know how we got there. I don't know any of that. Oh, hold on, honestly. Back up, back up, back up, back up. So you guys put him in a sleeping bag. Yes, ma'am. What well, do you he, use to start the fire out back? Um, this is not my burn, my first burn body case. So yeah, I know. Um, he uh, before all of it started happening, um, he was sitting there planning, plotting, and planning. And he said, I need these coals really, really hot. So he, he just started grabbing branches and everything, and he started throwing it into the fire. Uh, he, who else helped him get branches to throw them um, You and who? I, I helped him, Roach helped him. That was basically it. The girls? No, they were in the house. Um, so you guys got this real hot fire pit going. And uh, he, and then, he, uh, then we got it starting to go, right? Um, well... We had these two tires. The tires, you now the rubber was supposed to, I guess what Mike said was supposed to, uh, do over overdo the smell of the dead, the burnt body, something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, so where'd you get the tires? The tires were already in the front yard. They they come off of uh, some car or something. It was a small tire and then uh, a kind of larger tire, like a regular size car tire. Mm -hmm. um, and so what do you guys do? You put the body in there, put the tires over it, or what? Um, I didn't, actually, I didn't throw the body in there. I was still in the house cleaning. Burning Jackson's body had always been part of the plan, but the teens discovered that planning a murder was very different from actually following through with the physical act. Things do not go exactly as planned, and fear of discovery increases the odds that mistakes will be made. Look at me when you're talking to me, because you always keep, I know, you never I know. want to look me in the eye. You want to look right here all the time. I'm sorry. I'm just, 
Okay, I'm right here. I'm not over here. I know, I'm sorry. We've come this far. You know, and, I, and everything I'm telling you is a dead honest truth right okay. now at this point. Don't let it change. No, it's not. Because as soon as it changes, I'm getting up walking out of here. I know. No, it's not. It's okay. not going to change. Um, All right, so you guys do what with him okay. now? He's in the bag. Okay, now he's in the bag. And um, Soto and Mike, they carry him up the house. I'm still in there cleaning everything up. I'm going to get out And I'm still cleaning everything up, all right? Mm -hmm. And, um, but, uh, oh, yeah. And then I come out there. And then Roach was uh, telling me um, uh, something about the shovel. Like, uh, I guess he hit him over the head with a shovel or something. Because he, he was still, like, Mike's psycho. He, he's crazy. He, he, the, the guy's completely dead. He's still hitting him. I mean, this. So Mike hit him over there with a shovel or did he, Roach hit him? No, over Mike shovel? did. Mike kept on doing it. And then Roach showed me, showed me like, a little bit of the. Where's know, that shovel? That. I, that I can't tell you. I, I really don't know where that's at. Honestly, I don't. It's somewhere in that. It's somewhere in the backyard. Okay. I don't know. Um, but that that's that's somewhere. Um, and I come out and basically we sit up almost all night long trying to burn this body. It's um, not an easy task, is it? Um, looks. It's a whole lot easier on TV, isn't it? A little bit. Um, and I, I started getting tired. I'm like, man, I got to go to work tomorrow, man. I, I, I'm going to go to bed. I'm freaking out. Who was sitting outside throwing wood on there trying to burn this body? Um, Mike and Soto. Margo stayed with the body throughout the night, long after the others had given up. And she was like, was there a fire at any point in time? And I was like, yeah, sometime late at night, there was a fire. I said that I peeked out, like, I peeked out the window because... I was scared to do anything else. And I saw she fire. was like, did you put any wood on it? Did you put any of the stuff on it? Did you throw anything in it? And I was like, no, because I didn't. I know. I told him that, too. And I never said she you was did like, you're lying to me. I was like, I didn't put anything of sus yeah, in They've been saying that we did everything. Like, they've been saying, oh, you're lying, you're lying. <laughs> You and they're gonna this, do. You and they're that. gonna. No, do, I didn't. And they're gonna do that to you to make you cry, to make you say shit. And then you she know, was like, you, no. you say what and you know because I like, told them that you didn't throw nothing on it. It was me, Rose, and Mike that started throwing wood on that fire shit. And there was none of that come out of my mouth. And if she's got that doubt, I will tell her that it was wrong because I did not say that. They were still out there, the girls were still in the house. And then I go in the house, I take a shower, and uh, Amber's going to sleep in Mike's bed, and Charlie's in her bed, and I come out the shower, and I'm talking to Charlie, I'm like, you're okay, you know, trying to comfort her and everything. And um, To Charlie? Yeah, to Charlie. You she and Charlie she, in a relationship? Not really, no. I just, what do you mean I, not really? No, no, not even at all. Okay. Like, I just think of her more like a friend, you know? She, so she's let me stay like there. Amber in a relationship? No. Well, they wanted to be. They wanted, yeah, they wanted to be, but they, they was at one point in time, and then... Um, Sexually? No. Okay. No. Amber, uh, after said... Hooper is wrong about the nature of Wright and Bargo's relationship, but it is hardly the type of information that Wright would share with her brother. Amber didn't want to do anything with Mike, and Mike agreed to it. Mike was like, all right with it. But what really ended their relationship was the Tessa thing, uh, the statutory rape. Uh, I guess uh, her dad called the cops and wanted him arrested, and I guess he's a partial cop or something like that. I don't know what the thing is. Um, well, he, well, Tessa's dad called, and um, I was at work, and Amber texted me at work, and I said, me, I guess me and Mike are done. And I asked her why, and she said, because he just took off with uh, Tessa and her mom somewhere. <coughs> because uh, the cops are looking for him for a statutory rape. He has a warrant out for his arrest. So they were gone. And uh, the next day, that the next morning, uh, Amber, you know, talked to him or whatever. And this is, I, I knew, I met Charlie a uh, few times before I went to her house. Um, you know, and I knew her by Chris and uh, Sam. Um, but that, you know, but... You know, we went over there, whatever, and 
Uh, and I, I kept on thinking, you know, I need a place to live. I, I can't, I'm, I'm arguing with my dad all the time. I don't need all this stress, you know, I just need to. So you end up moving So in I end up moving in with Charlie. And so I was going to pay her a couple hundred dollars, you know, months. That's why you got rid of your computer. Mm, yeah, basically. What do you mean, basically? See, this bothers me. You keep saying basically, know, so there's a little more to it. No. Yeah, no, there no. is. The detective points out Hooper's continued use of the word basically. This is often but not always an indication that someone is lying. However, some people use them as filler words, and they can mean nothing at all. Not really, because well, yeah, I, really. I said, no, I got, I, got, I got the money, and I was supposed to give it to Charlie, uh -huh. but I did, but the truth is, what did you do? I didn't um, get $200 for it. It was a piece of shit, um, laptop, I only got 50 for it. Okay. And Who did you sell it to? Um, I, I got it from work. Uh, Guy at McDonald's? Yeah. And you work at the McDonald's where? Um, 466. 466? Yeah. Okay. I, I, yeah. Um, I sold it to him. Um, but, Mike, uh, but, um, where were we at? With the, where we were was, you guys were sitting outside, you and Soto and Mike, all oh, yeah, night, yeah, yeah, putting yeah, wood yeah. on the fire to burn him yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, well, I decided to go in the house, take a shower and stuff like that, go to bed, and they're still out there. And, uh, well, I'm in there comforting uh, Charlie, and Mike comes in there, and he wouldn't say nothing to us. He seemed all pissed and all mad and everything, and I went in there. I was like, what's what's up with you, man? Um, he's like, I don't want to talk about it. Just leave it alone. He's like, I'm like, okay. And uh, I got, uh, I, I, I went to go to bed, and I make sure Charlie was all right, see if she could go to sleep, whatever. I told her, if she, you know, if she needed somebody to talk to, just wake me up in the middle of the night. And so Roach was still outside with, with him, and I'm going to sleep and stuff like that, watching TV. And uh, Roach comes in there about, let's see, I don't know, like 3, 30, 4 o'clock, wake me up. He's like, can you go out there and uh, watch that? And I told him no. And he's like, um, all right. Um, I was like, I gotta go to work. I'm going to go to sleep. So, um, and then basically after that, it was the morning come up. Uh, I'm they're trying to wake me up and everything, and I'm not waking up. So I didn't wake up till about eight, nine, somewhere around there. And I'm getting ready. Um, you know, we're just going around there. Uh, Mike's in the back picking teeth from his skull and playing with his tongue. He's all sick and everything. Playing, playing with his tongue and everything. Yeah, nasty. Uh, I said the same. I had the same look. I've seen worse. And um, he and he, um, he's putting them into them paint, them, them containers with paint and everything, the ashes and everything. Who's helping him do that? Uh, he, he was at that point. He was just doing everything by himself at that point because everybody just said, "Fuck it, we're done." So basically, at that point, he's like, "Fine, I'll do it." And he's doing everything by himself. And then um, I'm at work, and so finally he con uh, I told him, okay, I go in the house, go take a shower and everything, you know, that morning. And I told him, I'm, and, you know, I'm getting ready to go to work. I'm getting my uniform on. My mom calls. She said, bring, you know, dirty clothes, whatever, wash them. And then when I take you to work, well, Mike goes, uh, all right, can I go with you? I said, I, I, I guess I don't care. Amber wants to go, so we go back over there. And then after that, Amber and you yeah, and Mike Amber, go to your mom's house. Uh, yeah, the, the so girl. she didn't go anywhere with Charlie to Chris's house or anything like that. She went with you. Okay, no, nah, she yeah. went. She went with us, but she come. But uh, after that, um, they after my mom dropped me off or whatever at work. I guess Mike was trying to confess to my mom about it, but it didn't really come out that way. Um, and then, but they really, but Mike left or whatever, and he was gone all day long. Okay. So far, far as where were these paint buckets while he was gone yeah. all day long? Uh, that's what he was doing. He was gonna go take them off. Okay. With who? That I'm telling you the dead honest truth. That I don't know. Like I said, he always had somebody that he was gonna call or whatever. Somehow, Bargo managed to convince James Haven to take him to the quarry where he could dispose of Jackson's remains. So, so Monday, sometime during the day, he called he, somebody with a vehicle. Yeah, with a vehicle to take him off. And he put them, He and yes, he did, he put them things into that dumpster to get him out the yard okay. before, before we left. He put them into the dumpster, okay. all right? 
And uh, sometime during that day while I was at work, Amber and uh, Charlie, they was at Chris's for a good few hours, uh, three, four hours. The whole time, all day long, they was at the house for like 15 minutes because uh, just to grab like some stuff or whatever, like clothes or whatever. And they went back to my, my, my mom's house to like eat dinner and stuff, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, and then and then I come and then uh, James comes and picks me up. All right, um, Mike's in the back seat with him. Okay, so Mike's now, with now, James now, when he picks you up yeah, at work on now, Monday. Mike's in the back seat with him. Okay. Okay. And Mike goes, "Listen, dude." Um, I was like, "Man, y'all want to drink whatever?" And he's like, uh, "No, just get in the truck." I was like, uh, "All right." He gets in the truck. Uh, I get in the truck and um, we get down the road. And Mike goes, the cops are after me, dude. I was like, well, what are you talking about? They know. Somebody said that they they heard a firecracker or something like a pop. And um, somebody said it was me, and I shot Seth. And now I got to go. I got to get out of town. He said this in front of James? Yes. Um, he said this in front of James. Um, and James wasn't there that night at all, James, because James decided we asked, uh, Mike asked him if he wanted to stay, and Mike's, uh, James sat there, and he was like, I'm tired. This is your mother's current husband? Yeah. Okay, did he know about the uh, plan? Not, uh, he knew he, about he, it. He, no, not really, he knew bits and parts about it, like, because he kept on, I don't know what the thing was, um, he really didn't know the whole thing, honestly. Um, what did he, he didn't know? really want to know that he knew that, but, you know, the overall what he knew was Mike was going to shoot. Haven overheard the conversation about what the teens planned to do to Jackson, but it made him uncomfortable and he left. So your mother's current husband knew that Mike was going to shoot. Mike was going to shoot him. Okay. And well, when but he just didn't him. get into the intricate part of planning. He yeah, just knew what was going to happen. Just, he just knew what was going to happen. How did he know it was going to happen? Because we were out there. Uh, when we were throwing everything into the fire and everything, um, he uh, we were talking about it or whatever, and then that's when it comes the conversation about because uh, James really hates my dad. My dad beat the hell out of him a long time ago um, when they split up the first time, and uh, I guess James has lost everything, and I guess he was like, I don't care no more or whatever. And then Mike was talking about killing my dad, okay. And, was James um, there while you guys were feeding the fire stuff? Uh, yeah, yeah. He he was there at that point. He was there then. But he decided to leave about... I, I, I don't really know the whole time. So he left just after Seth was shot? No, he wasn't even there. Okay. So uh, he left, left before. way before that, like when we first... Uh, like, Started building a fire. Yeah. He left but he now. and Mike, he knew because Mike told him you guys were going to kill Seth. He, he And then they had a discussion about killing your dad. Um. Yeah, but... James was like, man, I've lost everything. He's like, I don't care no more about him. He's like, uh, your mom and uh, your dad has sold everything in the house that was mine. I don't give a fuck if he's dead or not. I don't care. What do I have to lose? Is your mother back with your father now? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So that's what I'm not understanding. Your mother is now back with your father, mm-hmm. and James is out. Yeah, he's been okay. out for like a year now, straight Okay, okay. Okay, so now James is like obsessed with my mom. Okay. Truly. Um, and they were talking about it, whatever, and Mike was like, listen, I can kill your dad. I was like, what? He's like, if it's up to you, because I know you and him has been having a fallout, and I said, no. Uh, I don't. I know. I I know. Me and him has been having a fall, but I don't want nothing. I was like, no, don't do it. I, I was like, no, you don't need to. Why not? Why? Yeah, why not? You guys are not getting along. James is your friend. Cause I, it's my dad. I still love him. Okay. That's why. Okay. And James, James, he's there. You know, he, he picked me up from work. I mean, I love the guy and all. You know, he has been there. He's helped me out a lot. But I'm not gonna go out and have my dad, my dad dead. Mm-hmm. I love the man. I mean, no matter everybody. Argues, so James right? tells Mike, uh, you know what? I, I, everything's gone. Yeah, I'm done. But then I, I don't know. I don't know what James is thinking now. He, you know, whatever. I don't. I don't think he's gonna do anything because he's just that type of guy. You think if James he, would kill your dad? No, himself? no. He, I know James way too well. He's too. 
how can I, a coward, more or less. He's, uh, he, he's deadly scared of my dad. He won't go nowhere near my dad. He don't even want to live near him. Okay. You know? So you go to work. James picks you up, brings you back, and, and Mike's with him Monday night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Mike's with him. It's about 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we get down the road, and um, I have Mike give me a car of cigarettes. Um, and then Mike goes, they got stolen. And uh, I gave his truck, right? And then Mike told me, and then I was like, yeah, and what else? And then Mike told me that the cops are looking for him and everything else. <sighs> then um, the cops were looking for him, and he said, I have to get out of town. And he kept on asking me for $100, because I just got my paycheck. He asked me for $100 to get out of town. $100, $100. Well, I told him no. I didn't give him $100. I didn't give him a jack squat. I wasn't going to. I wasn't going to help him get out of town. I said, no, you need to figure out yourself. You need to go tell your dad. And that's when he told me, he's like, well, I'm getting out of town somehow, some way. I was like, you know what? Just drop me off at a quickie and I'll walk to my house. Fuck it. He's like, well, when you're going, when you're going by my, my, my grandma's house, can you go tell my dad? So I went and I told his dad. So he stayed in the truck with James. Huh? Yeah. And after and that. And he got out. And after that, I don't know what happened after that. I haven't heard from him since. I don't know. Margot had Haven drive him to another town where one of his ex-girlfriends lived. They allowed him to stay, but became uneasy when he told them what he did. The next day, they made Bargo turn himself in. Oh, Does anything. James know where he's at? Uh, I haven't have talked, talked to James. James. I haven't. I don't have no contact with James where yet. Where does James live? Um, he's with his uncle for right now. He's trying to find another place to live because his uncle. Where does his uncle live? Um, over there by the flea market, Market of Marion in uh, Bellevue, across the street from there, the Ridge, Bellevue Ridge Estates. Bellevue something Ridge like, Estates. Something like that, yeah. Do you know, do you know how to get there? Um, I don't know exactly where he lives because mm, I don't know his uncle that well. So I've really never been there, and his uncle really don't like me. What's his uncle's name? Um, that, see, I know him. Do you know what the house looks like? Uh, it's a white trailer. I know it's fenced in. I know that I've been there one time before, and that was it. It was like night, and that's just because James needed to get clothes, and he was gonna sleep in his truck because. Do so you think that James helped um, Michael might, during the day get the um, rid of the paint buckets? Uh, he might have. Why he, do you keep telling me? Why do you keep saying? Uh, uh, see, I like see. That's what I'm saying. I don't know. And I don't know. You don't know for sure where he's at. Yeah, I did see. That's what I'm saying. I don't for sure know about it. But that, Mike kept that. talking about a place. Yeah, the Rock Quarry that, by that, Gander Mountain. By Gander Mountain. That that's what I you know. Um, that see that I don't know if James helped him or not. I don't know if he had somebody else help Mike. Uh, or, or I mean, if well, Mike gosh, had he, somebody. He was with James. He was with James when he picked you up. Yeah, James was with him. So, well, he, is it possible? Possible. I see. I, I don't know. Okay. I mean, I can't just go out. I mean, I'm trying. I'm to give you a break here. Okay, take a deep breath. You did very well. Thank you for being honest for the first time today. You're welcome. Do you feel better? Honestly. Honestly, yeah. Not really though, because I know something bad is going to end up happening. Right but now. you do feel feel relief that I have it. I don't know. But I know some bad's about to happen. Well, you can say that, but you just don't know. I'll be back in a minute, okay? Yes, ma'am. Right. Everything I did to you was completely honest. Everything you told me was honest, and I didn't promise you anything. You remember when I read you your rights before? You understood that you were still, yes, ma'am. Still had those rights available to you. Yes, ma'am. I told you at any time, you could stop my questioning yes, with you. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Did I promise you anything? Coerce you? Anybody promise you anything? No, ma'am. Have you been hurt or beat in any way? No, anything? That's what I'm saying. Everything that I have said to you at this point in this room is completely honest. Okay, I'm and it's honest. voluntarily and freely of your own will? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'll be back. Take me, Brian. Okay. I just got a couple more questions. What clothes did you have on yesterday, and where are they right now? Um, I had, I had my work pants on. Work pants from McDonald's? Mm -hmm. I had my work pants on and I didn't have a shirt on. Sunday, what did you have on when this happened is what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay, so you have
Work pants and no shirt. No shirt. What shoes did you have on? Uh, I have my work shoes through black Nike. Where are they at right now? My mom's house. The black Nikes and the black pants are at your mom's house? Mm -hmm. Have they been washed? Um, I was washing my pants for work today because that's the only uniform I have. Okay, but I your shoes haven't been washed. No, ma'am. Okay. Um, and you don't know where the bleach came from? No, ma'am. Like I said, that bleach was, you know, was there when I, when I got there, you know, that's... I, uh, honest truth, I don't know where the bleach come from. That's what I, you know. Okay. But you know that that house is not a bleach house. No, so that, obviously that house the bleach is, was bought for this reason. Um, I don't know if it was bought for the reason. I know there was bleach. Was there around. a plan on uh, like washing walls or washing windows or washing the outside of the house? Well, no, no. We were supposed to clean the whole house, you know, because when we moved in there, see, I don't like being, I, I've never been in a house that was completely dirty. So me and Amber and Roach and Mike were supposed to clean the whole house. That's, you know. So you think the bleach was bought for that? It might have been. I don't know. I when know. did you guys know, decide you were going to clean the house? Um, we've been deciding on it since did I Did you buy in. the bleach? No, ma'am. I had no money until Monday. Okay. I absolutely no money. Okay. My mom even knows that, too. So I had absolutely no money. Okay. What do you think your mom's going to say when you... Does your mom know this true story? I don't know. Okay, you'll tell me more stuff. Is there anything else you didn't tell them that you didn't tell me? You told them everything? Oh, no. There's nothing. She knows what I told her. What do you think mom's going to say? Not one of her children, but both her children are involved in murder. Look at me. Oh, look at me because I want to tell you something from my mother. Okay? When you tell her, I'm going to let you sit over there and I'm going to leave you guys alone. You're going to have to tell her at some time, Kyle. Just be easy with her. As the reality of the situation sinks in, Hooper breaks down. What does she know about James' involvement in all this? She don't know, man. She doesn't know anything about that? She don't know. Okay. All right. Now, one more second. I'm going to switch some rooms here. Okay. Kyle Hooper was originally sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole in the premeditated first-degree murder of Seath Jackson. In 2014, he received a resentencing hearing at the direction of the Fifth District Court of Appeal, which in 2014 found that Hooper could not be subject to a mandatory life sentence as an adult convicted of the same crime would be. The life sentence was kept, but Hooper will be eligible for parole after 25 years. To learn more about the outcome of the others involved in Jackson's death, check out their respective interrogation videos. And that's where we end this video. If you liked today's video, then drop a line. And if you want to support the channel even further, you can check out my Patreon link in the description below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.